Hello, today we'll be looking at this exciting box from Emacs, but just before we get into that, a quick reminder, please like or dislike this video if you don't like it, comment down below, don't forget to subscribe, and if you can find it, click on that little bell icon, it's around here somewhere, it'll tell you when I'm uploading videos. So, today, Emacs have brought out something a little bit different. I haven't done anything that doesn't fly for a long time. This, as you can see, is a radio control car, but what they've done is make it fully FPV and they put the whole kit in there. And of course the idea is um, that anybody can drive a car whilst flying a quad or something. It might be something that you have to like do lots and lots of practice and sort of up your skill level. Car driving, I think you can pretty much put the control in anyone's hand and they'll get the hang of it instantly. So a real sort of pick up and play thing, we hope. But let's take a look at what's inside. It's interesting actually, um, radio control cars with cameras on is actually how Fat Shark started. I know Greg, when he was uh, developing the company, that's where he was looking at uh, developing the goggles for. Uh, and then it turned into just goggles for flying stuff. But anyway, uh, some instructions. And in here, the little car itself, it's 1 18th scale. Uh, I think you can use it outside, but around the, around the house inside is uh, ideal as well. Camera's sat in there, looking straight over the wheels to give you this really good context about driving a car. Real driver's eye position there. Uh, I can see that we've got a little button in there. I don't know if that's for the VTX uh, on-off switch at the bottom. Not much to say about that. We've got a screwdriver with a spare screw for something or other. In here, we've got the controller. This is very typical of what a, a car control looks like for those imagining normal sticks. We've got a trigger for forward, uh, brake and backwards and then we've got a steering wheel to steer it. Uh, got some trim, an on-off switch, three AA batteries to power this bit. Then we've got the FPV thing, which is this little pair of goggles. And we've also got this little Omni antenna that goes in there. Box type goggle. Uh, we've got little adjustments for the Fresnel lens here. And I've tried one of these pairs before and I found them to be actually pretty comfortable. You know, they're a little bit heavier than Fat Sharks obviously, but there's not too much weight there and you can get the adjustment right so it really does fill your vision nicely. So that's nice. This is all powered by this here battery, uh, which plugs in and is chargeable on USB. And there's a USB lead here to power it. And if you're wondering where the battery is for this and how you charge it, you take the little canopy off. This is just a very simple plastic shell that sits on top. And you've got little tabs on the canopy that just sort of pull away like that. And then what you've got here is your USB port. Again, you just hook up the USB cable and you're good. And this is indeed the button that handles the band and channel changing for the VTX. Nice and simple, um, hoping for good things from it. So no setup to do, let's just charge it up and see what happens when we try and drive it. So here's me saying no setup. I thought I'd just show, um, again, quite simply how you get this thing on to charge and what it looks like. Just pop this thing off the little tab there there, there, and then plug in a USB cable to here. And the reason I do show this is you can almost not see it. There's a little green LED that lights up just there and you can just see it in the in the camera there. And when that goes off, it means it's charged. But it, it's a little bit difficult to see. As mentioned, this is the button to change the bands and channel on your VTX. If you're on your own, you probably won't have to ever touch it. Uh, it seems to default to F1. If you look underneath, um, now obviously when you, you plug in, it charges the battery. But if we take an actual look at what's in here, it's quite interesting. We've got in here a tiny little 300 milliamp hour 1S battery. Interesting in the fact that it's got a normal PH2 connector there, so you can take that off. And if you wanted to, you could put something in much bigger, like this 450 milliamp hour battery, and that will fit absolutely fine if you want to drive it for a long time. The only thing I would say is this is a, a high voltage battery, and the original one isn't, so I'd only charge this to 4.2. But that said, this gives a hell of a lot of runtime you wouldn't believe as much. Then at this point, it's just a case of turning on the radio, turning on the car, and you, you literally never need to tell anybody anything. Wheels turn, go forwards, go backwards. It's as simple as that. Put on your goggles and drive. Let's do that now and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, we're off driving. 
And what I'm doing here, I'm using the supplied goggles, but I'm obviously recording this in something else. I'm using my Fat Sharks recording, which will give a slightly better picture when you're talking about breakup. To have um, a view of the comparison between the goggles and something like the Fat Shark goggles with the Rapid Fire module, take a look at the Emacs Easy Pilot. Uh, video I put up just recently because I do a, a sort of side by side on that one but uh, suffice to say these goggles work absolutely fine and I'm never sort of thinking where am I going it's covered in static um, it, it's all good especially just around your house now I'm inside the house here because it's sort of a nice driving environment it's a bit horrible outside because it's winter you can certainly take these outside but it's not it's not an off-road buggy by any means so a sort of nice flat pavement or road where it's not wet you're going to go quite well and allegedly the range is about 100 150 meters my dog here is uh, confused by this one she's so used to quads flying around her head she doesn't even bat an eyelid but this thing rolling across the floor has completely confused her so what i really enjoyed doing with this one and it's surprising just how low profile it is. It's just finding places that I didn't think I could go. Um, unfortunately, I'm finding they're all covered in dust. So under the, the treadmill there is fine. Going under these chairs is also absolutely fine. And this camera is, is nothing particularly special, but it certainly seems to handle the uh, changes in light between sort of going under something and and going back into the light you can kind of see if you've got like a bright light in the distance it kind of blooms out a bit but there's certainly nothing you you can't handle there and um here's here's somewhere i didn't expect to get it's just like i've never been under here in fact just a few weeks ago the cat managed to drag in a mouse and let it go and the mouse got under there i could just imagine being able to corral it with this uh this car now instead of the the hour or so it, it took us to uh, catch it and, and re-release it so one thing I've got to talk about here is the runtime I was just pretty much driving along expecting oh maybe I'll get like five maybe ten minutes because it's not taking that much power uh, I didn't have any idea how long I was going because I didn't have any sort of time or anything on screen but I stopped the car after thinking oh, I've been going at least 10 minutes here I think I've got enough footage and I'd been driving for 20 minutes and you know I was doing a mix of I wouldn't say fast exactly but not not slow speed as I'm doing here but yeah 20 minutes and the battery still wasn't flat um, I, I checked the website and about 20 minutes is, is what it suggests and you saw that is a tiny little 300 milliamp hour 1s battery if we put that 450 in God knows how long we can run for. There's only a finite amount of time I have free to, to play around with this sort of thing. So that is pretty amazing. So the rest of this video is essentially me just doing the same thing pretty much over and over. Surprisingly, it uh, it doesn't get boring. I'm able to have a, a large amount of fun just driving this thing around because it's just quite good fun to drive around. Unlike a quad, which will go for about three or four minutes, this thing just goes forever. Of course, if there are like a few of you, two or three in the family, all having one of these little cars, imagine the amount of carnage and fun you can have going around little courses, having little races, that sort of thing. And of course, something like a sports hall, uh, perfect. And I said, if you've got like a nice clear day, you've got a nice flat surface outside, that's absolutely fine as well. You can really put this in the hands of anyone. This is my mother-in-law having a go who's 70 years old. The only thing we found though is because she's particularly long-sighted, uh, when she put the goggles on she really couldn't see what she was doing. Everything was a bit of a blob. But that said she still managed to steer it around uh, even though she's never tried this thing before at all. My daughter also had a great time playing with it but she decided her life as a teenager was far too busy to take time out and do some filming with me. Well, I've got to say, I think Emacs want to an absolute winner with this thing. It's so accessible. I mean, I just um, had a look at the Easy Pilot Quad, which is easy to fly, but it doesn't compare to this. I mean, this is effortless. Everybody can literally pick it up and just try it, and they will have a great time with it. Just thinking back to when I was a kid, I would have lost my mind as a 10-year-old about the idea of being able to drive from the point of view of a car. And, you know, I think children have got a little bit more jaded since 
uh, all those years ago, but I'd like to think that that's still an exciting prospect, even if it's not for the kids. Get a group of grown-ups or, or kidults like myself, uh, get them this, race them around a the hall, and they will have a great time. I've literally yet to find someone I've put this in the hands of to say, I don't like that. Everybody's like, this is great. Well, what is it? I don't like to talk about price generally because prices do change and, and, and vary a lot. But the price on this one seems really keen. So you can buy it with just the controller and the car and it's like $55 or something. Pretty, pretty keenly priced. And when you include the goggles as well, it's still under $100. It's like $95.99 or something which I think is pretty cool for what you get. It's pretty much cheap enough to be an impulse buy and, and not something you have to take too seriously, which I think is a great thing. So yeah, I'm looking forward to playing with this more because I am literally going to play with it because I'm a massive child. But anyway, this has been the Emacs Interceptor remote control FPV car. Uh, which is fantastic. Kindly supplied for review by Emacs, so many thanks to them. And of course, I'll include links down below for where you can check this out and get more details on the product. Anyway, I hope that review's been helpful and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.